Hello everybody, my name is Jim Lanza. I'm the owner of uh, Razor Baits out of Orlando, Florida. Uh, been in business since um, 2012, but under Razor Baits since May of 2014. Um, right now I'm in the process of doing a uh, order for uh, Senko Baits, which I call dip sticks. I'm working on a five and a quarter inch. I've got a, uh, a 400 bag order that I've got to do. That's 400 10 count bags. And uh, I'm in the process of doing those. Majority of the baits are gonna be black, blue glitter with a blue tail. What I'm gonna do is uh, use my um, Ultra Molds Shooting Star, the full size one. One of the original ones that were made um, back when Dave Mack uh, first got his. Dave helped me out a lot with the uh, setting up my machine. I've got a bad shoulder and I don't have the ability to pull or push real hard with it. And he made me aware that, that, that the shooting star required that. So I contacted Rupert over at uh, Ultra Molds and they came up with a design for a uh, bracket that would hold the um, uh, injector in the port so I could pull it with one hand and fill the injector. Um, but uh, it's worked out real good. I've had the machine now for more than two years, three years, something like that. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some more of these baits. I've got about a gallon and a half mixed up. I'm gonna be putting another half gallon in the um, uh, microwaves, heated up in the microwaves. I do it in cycles. I do like 11 minutes, first cycle. The second cycle is about four and a half minutes. And the third cycle is based on the, the position of the, uh, the plastic, whether it's um, close enough in temperature or not. But I usually nuke it for like another three and a half minutes. But uh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit about my shop and then we'll go from there. This is going to be a uh, recorded video as I tried to do a live video last night. And as I was setting up, I ran into big problems with the shooting star. Uh, the um, PIDs malfunctioned and they froze at 264, which in past history I've, I've, I've had that. And it doesn't control allow you to control the temperature. So what will happen is if you try to operate the machine with the PIDs frozen, she'll run the temperature all the way up to God knows where. Uh, I've scorched some plastic doing that in the past, and I mean, I've cooked it big time. So if you've got a, a, a shooting star and you have problems with it heating up and the PIDs freeze, uh, just turn the power off, leave the, or actually turn the heat off, just leave the power on and eventually the uh, PIDs will reset themselves. Usually takes anywhere up to half an hour. But uh, I'm gonna take the selfie stick down and just point you around the inside of my shop. Hope I don't bore you too much. And then uh, we'll get into shooting. Okay, this is pretty much a view of my shop. Uh, there's my shooting area and over on the side over there is where I store all my uh, completed baits. And then here's my mold rack. I've got about 120 molds in there and I got miscellaneous 20 other molds. But uh, I try to buy my molds for each bait that I make in groups of six. And they're multi-cavity molds, like uh, I've just bought, uh, I just ordered in some more molds from uh, Bait Junkie. They're 10 and a quarter inch uh, stick bait. I ordered five more, so I'll have six of those. They're four cavities each. And uh, I bag four of those 10 and a quarter inch stick baits in a bag that retails for $5.49. And uh, each mold represents one bag of baits. So when I go to shoot them, I'll get six bags every time I shoot a series of molds, of those molds. Same thing with my um, other baits. You know, I've got a, what's called the, I call the Fat Boy, which is the six inch uh, big stick that Bait Junkie has. And I've got six of those molds and six cavities each. Uh, originally was gonna put six in a bag, but I cut it back down to five. Um, and it turns out that I got basically seven bags of baits every time I shoot the six molds. And again, it works out fine for me, but I try to do everything in multiples of six or twelves. Uh, I do have a couple of, uh, I have my swim baits and I've got 12 two cavity molds and I put five of those, five of those swim baits in a bag. So I get 24 in a shot. So I'll get four bags and then, uh, you know, just short of uh, a fifth bag by one bait. But what I'm going to do now is, well, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the shop. You know, there's my um, 
uh, shooting star, and you can see the uh, the uh, holders, the uh, brackets for the um, press for, for the injector. Sorry, I'm stuttering here, um, but that's that was designed by Rupert and uh, uh, them over there at uh, Ultramoles for me because of my shoulder. I'll show you and demonstrate shooting in a few minutes where uh, I'll actually do, do a side view where you can see how I actually do it. You won't be looking at my back. But uh, to carry on a little bit more here, there's my uh, inventory section. Uh, I make uh, 17 different baits and I have 22 different colors and I basically have everything there uh, uh, based on color and here's some more. And then down here, I've got some stuff where it's uh, uh, waste, more or less, from shooting different baits. And being that they're single colors for the most part, I keep them on hand, and I'll regrind them, and I'll add them to new baits with some fresh, clear, uh, raw plastic when I cook them up. Um, but I don't like to throw that stuff away. It's hard to make money when you, you're throwing, uh, you know, a quarter of your product away because it's uh, supposedly waste. But get back over here to the shooting area and you see the, the, uh, the vice pipe clamps on the, on the wall. I use those to clamp my molds. And I also use um, screw extenders that I made. I have a video over on um, YouTube where it shows how I made these screw extenders. But what this one is here, this is a three inch screw extender. And it's got the little quarter inch base here that will go into the mold to hold it in place and what I do is I because I'm shooting usually two three four six packs at one time I don't have time to sit there and go back and re top off every bait and if you don't top off uh, for the most part I run into air bubbles in the top couple of baits I'll still get air bubbles in the runners and the extensions you know those screw extenders but it doesn't, for the most part, affect the baits whatsoever. And then uh, because of the top of the sprue extenders are uh, kind of sharp here, the tip of the Ultra Molds injector has an O-ring. And if you put the O-ring down on top of the sprue extender, uh, it'll cut the O-ring, destroy it, and you'll go through a whole bunch of O-rings. So many years ago, or a couple of years ago, I bought these sprue extenders from Bears, which I know is no longer in, in, in business, but this was one inch, it was three three for $15 or something like that, and I ended up buying six, and I lost four of them, so I'm down to two. But what I do is I use these as a topper for my sprue extenders, that way when I put the Ultra Molds injector on top, the O-ring's not affected, it sits on this flat surface, and it cushions it, so it doesn't damage the O-ring. I do go through quite a few O-rings over a period of time, but for the most part, I won't cut them on the uh, sprue extenders. I think I said it, but I have a, 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 a Facebook, I'm sorry, a YouTube page uh, called Razor Baits, and it shows on there how I make the sprue extenders, and they're nothing more than uh, half-inch couplers, copper couplers, and half-inch uh, copper pipe, and cut, measured, and hammered together and you make screw extenders. I've got them anywhere from one inch all the way up to three inch with a, a deep throat. Well, that one don't have the deep throat, but this one's got the deep throat. Because um, I have a couple of molds that the, the first cavity is down about an inch and a half. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't have back, back flow or any kind of problems. Okay, I'm getting ready to put a, uh, another 64 ounces in the microwave to heat up uh, more plastic. I want to put over about two and a half gallons in the, uh, the, the, the um, shooting store. But uh, right now what I, no what I normally do is I put the plastic in, I heat it up, then I add the coloring after it gets the temperature. I put coloring in it, then I put my glitter and my salt. Um, when I have a solid color where I'm only using a colorant and I'm not putting any glitter or any salt in it, I'll put the color in it, in it before I heat it up in the microwave. But if I got salt and glitter going in it, sometimes I'll put it, the, the color in it, and then after it gets the temperature, I add the glitter and the salt. You can do it either way. I find no real problems with it. 
I just don't like adding the glitter to it and then putting it through the heat process because when it's sitting in there for 15, 16 minutes cooking, it causes that glitter to uh, warp, uh, bend, become you know funny shaped. Uh, it'll still do that when you got it in the pre uh, in the um, shooting star uh, because it, the temperature in there, if you're shooting 360, 350 degrees, it'll warp the, the glitter. But uh, right now what I'm gonna do is, uh, Dave Mack taught me uh, how to use uh, the, the plastic instead of counting drops out. When you're doing large quantities, like 64 ounces here, it calls for, uh, in my situation, it calls for two milliliters of uh, colorant. And to sit there and count out two milliliters of colorant in drops would take forever. So it basically I take a plastic syringe. Um, he showed me a new way of doing it, but uh, the tips I have on my, my colorant bottles don't allow me to do the way that he said do it. So what I do is I just basically take my colorant, put it into the uh, uh, syringe uh, through the top, and then fill it to whatever two milliliters, and then I inject it into the uh, plastic. I'm gonna demonstrate that now, but I'm gonna turn it. Okay, now we're gonna measure out to add colorant to our plastic. Uh, most of my formulas call for two milliliters of colorant for 64 ounces of plastic. Um, the way that Dave Mack taught me was to use a hypodermic syringe instead of doing drops. If you do two milliliters of drops, I have no idea how many drops that is, but that's a lot of drops. So what you do is you put the two milliliters in there and then you add it to your plastic and the syringe helps you out. Well, over a period of time, you lose the numbers on the syringe because the chemicals of the colorant, when it gets on the barrel of the syringe, wipes off the numbers. This is what a uh, a brand new syringe looks like and you can see the um, the numbers on there now over a period of time like I said the numbers wear off because of the colorant uh, when you go to put the colorant into the syringe you got to make sure that the bottom is sealed so you have the plunger pulled out and I buy these little hypodermic syringe caps off the internet and they're designed to fit right on the tip of the syringe and now what you got is you got it sealed so what you do is you go and you, you add your colorant to your, your syringe. And what I, what I have is this hole's drilled for two milliliters. So when the, the plastic comes up to wood level height, that's two milliliters. Now all I have to do is take this over to the plastic, pull the bottom off while I'm holding the syringe over the top of the plastic, put the plunger in and then squirt it right into the plastic. put the color in the plastic and what I'll do is I'll come over and I'll pull the cap off the bottom and now that it's exposed it'll allow, I mean it's open, it'll allow me to squirt the color into the raw plastic. And then what I do is I pull the plunger back out and I put the cap back on and then I just put it to the side. And then from there, like this situation, 64 ounces, it's real easy to mix with a uh, knife. But what I do is I've got a, a cordless drill with a plastic tip paint mixer on it. And I'll just go ahead and I'll mix in the black, run it on medium or slow for a couple minutes, just to make sure all the color it gets mixed in. And then come out and I use a smaller Pyrex to get all the drippings off by just putting it down in there and hitting it real, real fast. Now I take my plastic and I'll put it in my microwave. And I'll set my microwave to cook for 11 minutes and 11 seconds. And that'll be the first warming. I've got another one in there. It's going. It's at two minutes left on the. I think it's this, the second cycle. But we'll get further along with that in a couple. Okay, I'm going to get my glitter set up. I've got uh, blue glitter, and my my recipe calls for one tablespoon, or I'm sorry, teaspoon of 015 two teaspoons of 035, 
and then one teaspoon of 062. And they're not accurate measurements, but it's a little bit more precise than just using dips and whatever the other measurements are. That way I can do this consistently uh, for coloration. Okay, I've got uh, 64 ounces of uh, heated plastic. The colorant's already in it. I'm gonna put the glitter in. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll dump it in, and just to get it started, I'll, start, I'll stir it with a knife, a, a butter knife, just to get it moving around in there, because if I use the, the cordless drill, what'll end up happening is it'll end up getting all bound up in the, uh, on the, the stirrer itself, and it's hard to get it off and it you know you go through a pain in the butt trying to get it mixed in uh, adequately so what I'll do now is I got it pretty much in there I'll go ahead and stir it up Okay, I just poured my salt into my 64 ounces of plastic, and I'm going to mix the salt up. Um, I'm not going to basically tell everybody how much salt I use because it's to each their own. Um, same thing with the colorant, same thing with the glitter, it's to each their own. But uh, I use salt based on my past experience and how I like the fish to bake and how they feel. And in the five years that I've been doing this with the uh, Stick bait, I've had tons of compliments and never have received a negativity about the way my, my baits fall, the rate of fall, or how durable they are. So I just stay with what I feel is comfortable for me, and you can do the same thing yourself. Okay, I'm going to put the plastic into the Presto Pot. I'm only using one Presto Pot. I'm going to use about two and a half gallons of plastic. Uh, but what I do is I've got my blades in there. i got double blades, upper and lowers. And what I try to do is I try to get my lower blade where it goes left to right. So when I pull it out, I can basically stand it up on the lip of the Presto Pot. And I can, um, it'll hold it there because of the, the, the uh, glitter rack. Then I take my plastic and I pour it into the pot. Oops, normally I don't make a mess like that. But I pour it into the pot and I use a spatula to basically scoop out all I can from the, uh, the Presta, I mean from the um, Pyrex. And then what I do just before I close it back up and start stirring it up, I'll take my mixing device and I'll just run it in there so all my uh, plastic is now currently the same temperature mix in you don't have hot or cold at different levels. And I just run it through there a couple of seconds. Again I clean it off. And then one thing I also do and I'll show you this up close is see if I can get to it without uh there it is. I use candy thermometers and I put them on the blade, the lower blade of my um, stirring system. And they keep the bottom, the tip of the, the candy thermometer off the bottom of the pot. But this way I know exactly what my temperature is. The PIDs are totally inaccurate. So I don't rely on them. I try to keep an eye on that candy thermometer. And it will tell me exactly what the temperature is. And in this situation, I'm trying to run about 250, or I'm sorry, about 350. And because I've had it open, it's about 275. But it'll, it'll get back up to temperature pretty shortly and I'll go from there. But I always use a candy thermometer. The PIDs are in no way, shape, or form accurate. And the only way to get accurate is by using a PID, which is called a Fuzzy Logic PID. And uh, I thought about going to those, but they're, they're right now a little bit expensive. And it's not something I feel is necessary as long as I got these cheap little $5 Walmart candy uh, thermometers. But uh, my other my other 64 ounces of plastic is beeping, so let me get it out 
and pour it into the pot, and then we'll get into shooting. Okay, I'm gonna set up and start shooting now. I'm gonna start shooting now, and I'm gonna show you how, because of my shoulder, how I do this one-handedly. Uh, I know some people are curious about when you shoot laminates, how you identify which is the top and which is the bottom. And what I've done on my injector, I've actually engraved it top, top, and I did some scratching around on it so I basically can see at any time what's top and what's bottom. And what I do is I put the injector into the, uh, the port on the top, I rotate it, it locks itself in position, and then with my good shoulder, my good arm, I pull my plastic out. Now what I like to do is the first time I heat, I fill my injector, I like to go back and purge it to make sure that it, it, it's hot enough and everything's going good. So, and what I do to purge is I push up against my hip and I, I push it in and it purges the injector. And then, had no error, so now I pull it out and I got it full rotate it to turn off the, uh, the valve and now I come over and I'll shoot and I'll, I can get three um, uh, it shots out of each um, injector full of plastic but I like to do two that way I know I have no bubbles every now and then you'll get a, a bubble or so at the top and I just don't want to take any chances of putting bubbles in anywhere in my baits so I, again, I fill the injector, rotate it to lock it off. I'll show you the shooting into the mold in a second, but I just wanted to show the uh, filling the injector and purging the injector um, based on the bracket with my bad shoulder. And I use one hand to do that. So again, here, purging the injector, use my hip. And to fill my injector, I use my left arm, my good arm, and I just basically pull straight out, and it fills the injector. Okay, I'm going to shoot again from a different angle. You won't be able to see me filling the injector and purging the injector, but you'll be able to see me shooting the molds with the sprue extenders. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said earlier, I have this one sprue extender cap that I, I had bought from Bear while he was still in business. And I put it on top because if you look at the injector nozzle, it's hard to see because of all the crud on here. But there's an O-ring right there. And that O-ring will get damaged if you put it down on top of that copper, uh, that sharp, that thin copper edge. So I put the injector in, in the uh, bracket into the orifice or the port. I pull my plastic. My injector is now filled with plastic. Rotate it to bring it out. Come over to my mold. I put the injector into the bare sprue extender. I shoot, and then what I do is I pinch the uh, sprue extender with my hand, and I'll push up on the bare um, sprue extender so it comes up with the injector, and then I move to the next spot, put it right in the hole, Again, I shoot, and then I pull it out of the bare injector, leave it in place, come over, purge my injector, come back, fill my injector, kind of put the framing of the injector against the sprue extender to pull the bare sprue extender out, put the tip of the Injector in there, inject, come over, pinch, push up, move the bear's sprue extender to the next place, inject, separate, go back, purge, again using my hip, okay, refill the injector. Come back over. Apply a little pressure, pull the bear's injector up, or the bear's uh, sprue extender up, inject, pinch, separate the sprue extenders, put the bear's on top again, shoot, and separate, 
I got another mold here, and that's the Bait Junkie 10 and a quarter inch mold. And being that I've only got one, I'm shooting it with no no uh, color tail, but I'm shooting it the solid black with blue glitter. Uh, so I can build an inventory of that until I get my 12 or my five other molds from Leonard. Okay, put the Bears screw extender on top of my screw extenders. Fill the, the mold, separate, purge the injector. Put it back in the hot plate. And then what I do is I've got a little sunbeam timer. And what I'll do is I'll push the button on it and I put it on top of the mold and I wait two minutes and then I separate uh, the baits or the, the molds and take the baits out of them. Now on this mold over here, it's been more than two minutes, so I know that they're they're solid enough that I can go ahead and uh, take them out of the mold and put put them in water, which I like to do for curing. And the sprue uh, sprue extender that I have on top of the baits, the molds kind of act as a handle, helps you separate the molds. You push down, lift up, and the mold is open. What I normally do is I'll take my scissors and I'll cut where the sprue itself meets the top two cavities. Pull the scrap of the runner out. Then what I'll do is I'll take the scissors and I'll go right down this, the runner and I'll split the sprue so that I have five baits on one side five baits on the other side and you can see black blue glitter with the blue tails put them in water close up the mold put it to the side do it again one of the things you could always do is I like to do that from time to time so that the plastic don't get stuck in the, um, the, the sprue extender separate cut it pull it apart Cut the runner, drop it in the water, close the mold. I'm going to put more blue tails in these molds, but I don't want to sit there and bore the hell out of you doing it. I'll do it with the uh, camera off and then uh, bring it back up when I, I go to shoot. Got it there, just take it over to the water, cut it the rest of the way, drop it right in the water to cool. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll demold all these things. And when I get done demolding them, then I'll go ahead and I'll put the blue tails in them. And once I get done with the blue tails, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll pull the baits that are already in the water out of the water and hang them. And I'll show you what I'm going to hang them on after I do this mold here. Okay, I've now got all 12 stick bait molds demolded. Um, the contents of the molds cut in half, so I got two sets of five from each mold. And then what I'm going to do is they're sitting in water cooling. And now what I'm going to do is a transfer them to my drying rack. Now these racks I picked up at uh, Ikea, they were like three bucks a piece, but it was a couple of years ago. I don't even know if they still make them. But what I do is I hang them on here and then I transfer them to another spot on the other side of the shop where I let them hang for three to five days to cure. But what I do is I take them out of the water and then I basically put them three in the middle and two on either side. And I put them on the rack and putting them on the rack like this, I can get um, 15, well actually it'll be 15 bags for me, but I can get 30 of these um, halves, these five sections on each one of these runs. So I'll have 15 bags here because I have 10 in a bag. So I'll have 30 halves on here and that'll be 15 bags here, 15 bags here, 15 bags here, and 15 bags here. So basically what I'll do is I'll end up having um, 
uh, what is that, 15, 30, 45, 60, 60 bags on this, and that would be 600 baits. So to go back and continue hanging them, just take them, put three in the middle, one on either side, slide it up tight. Three in the middle, one on either side. Okay, back at it. There's all the molds, all 12 of them, with uh, the tails all set up. Now all I do is close the molds up and then shoot them and be on my way again. If I wasn't shooting tails, what I would do is instead of putting the sprue back on the rack, I'd go ahead and start putting I'd put the, the sprue extender right on top of the molds. That way I'm ready to clamp and shoot again. Tells you got to open the molds back up in order to, to put the tails in before you can shoot so there's no sense of putting the uh, sprue extender back in it. What I am going to do is I'm going to show you the difference of shooting um, with the sprue extender and without the sprue extender to show you what I get when I, I try to what I call mass produce because I'm going to be doing six molds at a time and with the six bulbs at a time, you do get, you don't get enough time when you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. You don't get enough time to go back and top off the molds. So with the shrink down that you have, you end up getting a lot of air in the, the runner and sometimes it goes into the head of the baits. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and clamp these molds here and I'm going to shoot these six, three with a sprue extender and three without a sprue extender and I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as the air getting into the um, top of the baits. Hopefully I won't have any that I'll have uh, problems with it. These will be just, uh, you know, one color. It won't have the blue tails. Now I'll be able to shoot the uh, all six of them and we'll be able to examine three with the sprue extender and three without a sprue extender and I'll show you what I'm talking about it doesn't happen all the time but there's just too many times that it does happen it makes it worth my while just to put the sprue extender on okay here we go
Okay. Three with sprue extenders, three without a sprue extender, not topping them off. We give those a couple of minutes to cool. Now we'll come back here. start with the ones without the sprues on them. Oops. Not thinking. Okay. I'm going to cut these guys in half as far as the, the runner. And if you look, you see the void right there? That's from the sucking down of plastic. And this first bait, it's not really affected, if anything, right on the very tip. But, you know, you just, I don't want to take the chance of having a bait get air in it while I'm uh, trying to mass produce, per se. Again, this one here is shrunk down. You can see how it shrunk down into that, that first cavity, and it still feels good, but still it's too close for comfort as far as I'm concerned. And well, this one here feels like it's got air. With the glove, it's hard to really tell. But again, you can see that it's got a void in there. And I don't know how well you can see it, but you can see that there's a big void in there, and it basically goes right into the opening uh, at the gate right at the opening of the cavity. Now, that's two out of the three. We won't open the third one. But now we'll go to the ones that I have the sprue extender on. This time I'm going to pull the sprue through the uh, extender and I'm going to actually cut it down a little bit so it's a little easier. And if you look right in there, you see a little hole. I don't know if you can really see it or not. You can see a little hole. But let me cut this open down the center. And we'll compare the sprue, the runners to each other. Okay. The one over here which is on my left, your right, if you look, you can see a little void in there. But if you look at the one on my right, which would be your left, you can see a big void. Now, the plastic um, was able to, or the bait was able to suck up the plastic without causing a, a problem. And I don't think there's a, any possibility, really, that you can get uh, an air bubble in there. Now, let me, let me cut this off and show you the difference. Okay, this is cut off at the top of the bait, the top cavity, right where the top cavity ends. That's cut off there. This is the one with the sprue extender cut at the same exact spot. And if you look at it, there's no real air in there. And that's going to be most likely 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to have absolutely no air in the baits here. Where this one here, you may get air in the top bait. And I guess when you, you're shooting 10 cavities and you're shooting for fun, it really don't matter. But when I'm trying to produce, you know, 400 bags of 10 count, 4,000 baits, I got to make sure I don't have air in them and I can't sit there and keep going back and top it off. That's why I made the sprue extenders. And it's pretty consistent with the sprue extenders as far as the... Uh, the amount of air that, that is left in them after they're um, after you shoot them. See, there's a little itty bitty hole before I cut the sprue extender, the sprue runner open. But once I cut it open, there's still a lot of meat inside that you can see the little bit of a, a an air vent here, but it's nowhere near the gate for the bait. So there's 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm sure, there's no air in that bait. 
But right now I'm pretty well going to shut this down. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed what I did and I hope uh, you have an understanding of how I did it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate uh, to contact me. I will be probably doing a live video in the future. I've got a uh, another system that uh, Leonard from Bait Junkies and I designed. It's a Presto Pot with uh, Leonard's tro uh, stirring motor and Leonard's super large injectors. And Leonard and I designed a three position PID system to run that thing. And it's got an old um, High Rock, who's no longer in business, but a High Rock double barrel rack system as the holder for the injectors and what it does is it keeps the high rock uh, double barrel rack keeps the injectors hot because it's got a heat cartridge hooked up to it and if you look over here let me pull the camera with me if you look over here this is a bait junkie single PID system I've got this connected to the heating block now right there is a the two red sets of red wires coming out, that is the heating cartridges, and that holds the heating block there. And that's what heats everything up. And originally it was set up to the individual PIDs that ran the left pot or the right pot. And what I did is I separated it and I put it on here and I got the temperature sensor going to here so I can tell what the temperature is. And I used that. Um, to control the temperature there because like right now I got it set at 450 and it works its way up to 420 430 right now It's at four just under 400 Well, that concludes my video of the ultra mold shooting star system uh, You can produce a lot of product with that system as long as you have the quantity of molds and you have a high mold ca uh, cavity count uh, it is a good system. Uh, it does have its glitches and its problems. And for the most part, you can work your way around it, but you can use it for production. Uh, you're not going to be equal to the big boys, but you can do a lot more than your average uh, weekend manufacturer. If you got any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'll be more than happy to try to answer whatever I can. And I hope this video is very helpful to you. Thank you for your time.